that's really restricted to a one type of group of people or one uh, industry. Okay, and that might be a testament, say, to the teachers' unions, although this put, was put in place a long time ago. So, so you can see how, how strong are the current teachers' unions based on how much that credit might change uh, with re inflation over the years. But in any case, adjustments to income, line 11, you've got the educator expenses. So if you were an eligible educator in 2023, you can deduct on line 11 up to $300 of the qualified expenses you paid in 2023. So if you and your spouse are filing jointly and both of you were eligible educators, the maximum deduction is $600. So in other words, if you're a tax preparer and someone says that they are an educator, then the next question is going to be, of course, are, are you an educator that qualifies as an eligible educator so that we can possibly take advantage of the $300 uh, deduction that's and above the line deduction, which you might be able to get just based on the industry that you happen to be in, uh, uh, as an above the line deduction. However, neither spouse can deduct more than 300 of their qualified expenses on line 11. Now we have this question of what is a qualified expense that we have to take into consideration, but note that the dollar amounts are pretty low, like $300. So most people, no matter what job they do, if they're, if they're passionate about their job, they might be spending more, most likely will be spending more than $300 on stuff that would basically be expensable, something that you can write off if you had a sole proprietor Schedule C type of business. So just a quick recap of the dynamics here between a sole proprietor business and a W-2 business. If you had a sole proprietor business, then you have your own business reporting on a Schedule C. In that case, you typically have to pay for your own tools and whatnot, your own supplies, and those are gonna be deductible, the Schedule C, therefore, in essence, an income statement, the expenses on the Schedule C basically being business uh, deductions on the Schedule C. For W-2 employees, the assumption is the employer is responsible for providing all the tools that you, that you need to facilitate your job. And therefore, the IRS typically doesn't allow normal kind of business expenses that you would expend in order to help you to generate revenue if you're a W-2 employee because of that assumption. The employer should be providing them. But obviously, most of the time, if we're passionate about what we are doing, we're probably buying our own stuff uh, as well if we think it would be useful. And teachers clearly fall into that category. And the $300 limit, therefore, for an entire year, you would think is you know, fairly low. I think a lot of teachers probably are going to spend you know, that much money and, and therefore on eligible uh, items. But of course you would wanna keep track of the, th those spendings to make sure that in the event of an audit, you can justify those expenditures. Although again, you would think that an audit would likely not be triggered by a $300. But you never know, you know, I mean, maybe you're one of those radical type of instructors that tried to convince the drag queen to put more than just a thong on before the mandatory drag queen story hour, in which case, the IRS may well come after you as well as the FBI. So you want to keep your record straight.